Welcome to Roughing It With Ruth, the channel where everything is a bit rough around the edges. In this video, I'm going to go over the camera gear that I take with me on a backpacking trip. I am not a professional photographer or videographer, and when I go on a backpacking trip, my main aim is not to capture amazing videos or photos, my main aim is to have a great backpacking trip. And to that end, I don't take a huge amount of camera equipment with me and the camera equipment that I do take does need to be able to survive the rough and tumble of the outdoors. At the end of this video I will also go over the camera gear that I have at home that I use to film with but do not take with me on backpacking trips because it's simply too heavy. It's really important to me that I am able to film on the go while I'm backpacking and because of that one of the main cameras that I use is the GoPro Hero Black 7. I have my GoPro Hero Black 7 attached to a hand strap. I think GoPro actually markets this particular strap just as the strap. I have tried various other mounts for the GoPro, including a head strap and a shoulder strap that goes on my backpack. But there are two reasons why I vastly prefer the hand strap to either of those two options. The first reason is that this is a hands-free option for the GoPro, and that is the same as a head strap or a shoulder strap. You can do whatever you want with your hands while you are filming on your GoPro when it is attached to the strap. You can scramble, you can hold on to trekking poles, you can deal with gear. You also end up getting some quite unique perspectives because you can, for instance, be scrambling up the side of a rocky face and still have the GoPro filming while you're doing it. The second reason why I prefer the hand strap to either the head strap or the shoulder strap is that you can get far more perspectives with the hand strap. I can lift my hand up high, I can put my hand down low, I can swivel the entire GoPro around on the mount so that it faces me and take more of a selfie type video. When I'm not actively filming with the GoPro, I just fold it flat against the mount. And although this isn't the most low profile setup, it does actually work pretty well for me and I have been absolutely brutal with this GoPro. I have shoved my entire hand into cracks while I am scrambling, I have knocked it against rocks, put it into water, had it in quite cold and quite warm temperatures and it's managed it pretty well. It has a few scuff marks and some tiny little cracks here and there but other than that it's actually survived quite well. There are some downsides to the hand strap though and the main one that drives me absolutely crazy is this velcro piece that goes across your hand. There are actually three velcro straps. There are two that go over your thumb and then a larger one that goes across the side of your hand. And this velcro is one of the worst Velcros I've ever experienced on gear. Even when it's new, it doesn't stick all that hard and very quickly it loses its grip and it just starts coming undone randomly. So because I am the only person who uses this hand strap, I have actually sewn closed these two smaller straps that go over my thumb. The only strap that can open for me is this middle one. This middle strap still suffers from the fact that the Velcro is just not very good and I do periodically have to replace the fuzzy piece of Velcro underneath this middle strap and I just do that with some quite messy hand sewing every now and then because I do have a few pieces of this fuzzy Velcro left over from other GoPro straps. In addition to the GoPro Hero 7 Black, I also take the camera that I'm filming on right now, which is the Sony RX100 Mark 7. That is just a point and shoot camera, but it has quite good image quality, I think. And I really like the videos that it produces. It also handles low light a little bit better than the GoPro does, but it is not nearly as robust as the GoPro. So I have been on trips where I see that the forecast is for a lot of rain. And in those situations, I generally just leave the Sony camera at home and I only take the GoPro because I do not want my Sony camera to get destroyed. The Sony camera I have mounted on this little mini handheld tripod hybrid thing. This came with my camera in a kit 
and it's got two little legs at the bottom so that you can use it as a tripod. It's got a little button that you can push on the side to move the camera and it's also got a cord that plugs into the camera and some buttons on the tripod itself where you can take a photo or take a video or zoom in and out. I have found with all of my cameras that having some sort of mount or some sort of hand grip is quite essential if you plan to use the audio from those cameras. Because when you're hand holding a camera, it is far too easy to accidentally put your fingers over the microphone holes or to create ambient noise just by moving your skin over the camera as you change your grip. I keep the Sony RX100 Mark 7 camera attached to its little tripod hand grip thing and I keep all of that in this Deuter fanny pack which I just wear around my waist. Inside of this fanny pack I have two large Ziploc bags and the camera goes inside of both of those Ziploc bags whenever I'm doing river crossings or if it starts raining because it is not a waterproof camera. This bag doesn't have a huge amount of padding on it but the material itself is quite tough almost a sort of canvasy kind of material and that does really help if I'm sort of sliding past rocks or something I know that the camera is not getting damaged. The other thing that I have done is I have added an elastic bungee cord with a little carabiner to the bag and what I do with this is I clip it onto the camera itself and that just means that if I am busy filming with the camera and I drop it it's not going to hit the ground. It also serves as a little bit of a sort of stabilization point when I'm filming with the camera. In terms of the accessories that I take with for my camera equipment on a backpacking trip I take a 20,000 milliamp hour battery bank and that battery bank stays inside of a Ziploc bag which stays inside of my backpack liner along with three charging cables. A USB-C for the GoPro, a micro USB for the Sony camera and the proprietary Garmin cable that charges my watch. The Sony battery is 1240 milliamp hours and the GoPro battery is 1220 milliamp hours. I haven't actually been able to find out exactly how many milliamp hours the Garmin watch battery is, but I think it's somewhere around 300 maybe. And what I have found is that I can charge all three items, both cameras and my watch, about six times from the 20,000 milliamp hour battery. If I'm going on a really long backpacking trip, I might take an extra battery for the Sony and an extra battery for the GoPro. But what I generally find is that one battery for each camera lasts me about a day of backpacking. And then I just charge the cameras at night when I get to camp. In case I run out of battery power on all of my cameras and I really just want to be able to take some short videos and photos. I do also have my cell phone with me. My cell phone is the Samsung S20 FE. So the camera is also quite decent on this one. I quite like the photos that I get out of this camera. This is more of an emergency option. That is it for the equipment that I take with me on a backpacking trip. But when I am at home and I don't have to carry all of my equipment with me, I do use a few additional items. One of which is this Rode Link Filmmaker Kit Lavalier mount microphone. I really like using this microphone because it gives very nice audio and you can also move very far away from the camera without the audio being affected. The other item that I use quite a lot at home and that I am using right now is the Mi Photo tripod. And I use that generally in conjunction with a little splitter arm, which I also got along with my camera. And that just allows both the camera and the receiver for the lavalier microphone to be mounted on the tripod at the same time. And then finally, the piece of gear that I do use when I'm at home as well is I sometimes use a Zion Tech Crane M2 gimbal. It is okay to not use the same equipment as what you see other people using on YouTube. 
making your own plan and doing your own thing often yields the best results. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like to see videos that I've made in the past, then you can click on my channel name. And if you would like to see videos that I'm going to make in the future, you can subscribe to my channel.